When you set up a window in a map in Foundry VTT, do you just create a secret wall? But then that means the characters can see through it to the other end of the map and it doesn't matter where they are in relation to the window and they can see everything. Well, now using secret walls as windows is a thing of the past because Foundry VTT version 11 is out now and it brings proper support for windows among many other things. Let's have a look at the features of Foundry VTT version 11. Hi there, my name is Fondu, your VTT wizard, and I have over 300 hours in Foundry VTT use. I run this channel called Dice and Easy where I give you VTT tutorials and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. If any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button down there. The first stable version of Foundry VTT version 11 is out now, which means that version 11 has completed its testing phase and is ready to be used by everyone. This new version features a whole host of new features in Foundry Core, including better windows, compendium folders, and improvements to fog of war. However, before you go on an update to version 11, there are some things that you should consider. Firstly, I recommend waiting for about one month after the first stable version is out because it gives Foundry time to release some patches to fix any issues that slipped through the testing phase. For version 10, there were 10 patches within the first month of the first stable release. This month will also give module and game system developers time to catch up and do any necessary updates to their systems or modules. Secondly, some modules will break. As modules are developed and maintained by the community, sometimes some developers move on and leave their module. There is a way to check compatibility of modules and to find out which ones might cause issues once you've updated to version 11. However, this is a bigger topic than I have time for in this video, so I'm going to be making a separate video where I show you how to handle updating from one major Foundry version to the other. Lastly, before you update, back up all your data. The last thing you want is to update to version 11 and to permanently lose some data. This very thing actually happened to me when I jumped to Foundry version 10 from version 9 earlier this year. One of my players had been keeping their notes on their character sheet in Foundry, and once I updated all those notes, were gone. Luckily, I did have a backup and we were able to restore their notes. I'll leave instructions on how to backup your data for if you're hosting locally or using the Forge in the description box. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about the new features of Foundry version 11. The first thing that you're going to notice when you launch Foundry VTT version 11 is that the world and setup pages have had a UI and UX overhaul. Just so you're aware, UI means user interface and UX user experience. These pages have a much sleeker and more approachable look to them and overall they just feel so fresh and modern. You still have your worlds, game systems and modules tabs and on top of that, your warnings, configuration and foundry updates have now been moved to the top right hand corner. In addition to all of this, the new setup page also has a news section for relevant news about foundry and a featured content section which allows the foundry team to highlight cool modules, map packs, adventures, etc. to you. By the way, I will link the patch notes in the description box below if you want to have a look at the details yourself. On the world page, we also have this fresh new look. And in addition to that, you can also select a simplified layout for your world page so that your players see only what's absolutely necessary. This is great if you want to streamline the process of jumping into your game for your players. Overall, Foundry is looking to modernize their entire UI and UX and this is the first taste of it. In their year in review blog post, they said more of this is in the planning stages for version 12, but we'll have to wait and see how that materializes in the future. As I mentioned, in previous versions of Foundry, the only way to properly do a window in your map was to use a secret wall, but it has some drawbacks. Well, now there is a new wall type called window walls in your wall controls. With this, you can draw windows that allow you to set a threshold before which sight, light, and sound are restricted. Also, you can toggle on and off something called attenuation, which means that once you are within that threshold, the closer you get to the actual window, the more sight, light, and sound will come through. For example, if I were to set the threshold at 20 feet, 
my players would not be able to see through the window before they are within 20 feet of it, and if I have the attenuation on, they will need to move right up to the window to fully see through it. Oh, and windows can be opened just like doors. You just need to add a door configuration to the window wall, and you can now actually set sounds for doors directly in the door itself, and Foundry even includes some pre-made sounds. Finally, we have a proper way to make windows in Foundry. This will definitely be a significant improvement to the quality of maps and to the player experience. Now in Foundry Core, you can create folders inside compendium packs. You can search, collapse, and expand compendium folders and interact with the documents contained within them just like with any other folders. This new feature will allow you to import and export folders between your world and a compendium while keeping your documents organized. On top of that, the compendium packs section has a sleeker, more modern look and is nicer to use. I've always found compendium packs to be clunky to work with and browse, so this update is a very welcome change. Version 11 of Foundry sees the database engine of the software being changed to level DB from the previous NEDB. This might sound scary for you module developers out there, but fret not. Foundry has said that this new database engine uses a similar data structure as the previous one and shouldn't require any drastic changes from you. This new database engine provides the following benefits. One, ability to make specific granular changes without the need to rewrite an entire entry. Two, increased speed of bulk database operations. Three, capability to selectively update grandchild embedded documents. Four, enhanced search features thanks to improved compendium indexing. And fifth, improved performance and stability for data storage operations. I know, I know, from a user standpoint, this engine update doesn't seem too exciting, but anything that improves performance and sets up a smoother future for Foundry is a win in my books. As I mentioned before there, the change of database engine provides some performance and stability improvements, but that's not the only improvement to performance and stability. With version 11, the canvas rendering engine has now been updated to Pixie 7, which is to say that the engine that handles showing your map, your cursor, lighting, and fog of war has been updated. In particular, when it comes to fog of war, the canvas rendering engine and database engine updates together give some significant performance improvements. All of this is to say that your scenes should now be running faster and smoother than ever before. And this does not only affect powerful PCs, but also those less beefy ones. I have two players in my Curse of Strahd campaign with older machines, so these performance improvements are very exciting for me because I want all my players to have as smooth of an experience with Foundry as possible. By the way, if you'd like to play Curse of Strahd with me, I'm running campaigns through startplaying.games that anyone can join. Links to those to sign up are in the description below. This next feature seems like a small one, but I think it's indicative of the UI and UX future of Foundry VTT. Now, when you hover your mouse over any of the left-hand tools, you will see a little tooltip or tool clip, as Foundry calls it, which will tell you what the tool does and a GIF of the tool in action. It's pronounced GIF, just get over it. This is a great addition for onboarding new users and lowering the barrier to entry for Foundry. If you don't want to see these tool clips, you can turn them off in the settings. I can see these tool clips being expanded to other parts of Foundry VTT so that new players and GMs have a much easier time learning the tools and remembering what they do. I can't wait to see how they take these UI and UX improvements forward in version 12 of Foundry VTT in the future. With version 11, module developers will now be able to indicate a persistent storage location, which means that any data stored in it will not be deleted when the module is updated. Also in version 11, modules can now indicate recommended modules to install together with the module, and users will be shown a similar pop-up to when a module has required modules to install together. So now you won't have to rely on writing recommended modules in the module description and hoping that your users read it. 
As a module power user myself, this makes me very happy. Installing any optional dependencies will now be easier than ever before. Of course, Foundry VTT version 11 includes more than just the features that I mentioned in this video since it's a major release. So if you want a deep dive, I will leave the stable release patch notes as well as the prototype one and prototype two patch notes in the description box below. So you can get all the details there if you want. The future of Foundry is looking bright and exciting. Every major version of Foundry has been a significant improvement to the software, and I can't wait to see what playing on version 11 is like and what version 12 will bring us later in the future. Great work, Foundry team. Keep up the fantastic work. Will you be updating your Foundry version 11? Let me know in the comments below and which features you like the most. I would really like to hear your thoughts on the different features of version 11. Also, if you found this video useful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. It's a small deed, but it does a lot for me. Did you know that I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European time, which is 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern. Link to that is in the description below. So go give me a follow if you want to come talk VTTs and TTRPGs. All right, now on the screen, you're going to see a video of mine where I give you some of my favorite Foundry VTT modules. You should check it out to level up your Foundry games. That's all for this video. Thanks a lot for watching the whole thing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.